in this video, we're going to have the discussions of your different diagnostic tests and procedures that is being used to diagnose the presence of your cardiovascular disorder or your disease. First is that we have what we call your cardiac enzyme. Under your cardiac enzyme, we have what we call your CKMB or your creatinine kinase myocardial muscles. The CK test measures the total level but does not distinguish between the three isoenzyme. When there is an increased amount of your CK present in the blood, the CKMB test can be used to determine whether it is due to heart damage or is more likely to be related to skeletal muscle injury. Primarily, when there's an increase or an elevation of your CKMB, it indicates your myocardial damage. Okay? Usually, the elevation occurs within 4 to 6 hours and peaks within 18 to 24 hours following an acute ischemic attack. Next is your lactate dehydrogenase. When there's an elevation of your uh, lactate dehydrogenase, it usually occurs 24 hours following your myocardial infarction and with a peak within your 48 to 72 hours. Normally, LDH1 is lower than LDH2. When the serum concentration of LDH1 is higher than LDH2, the pattern is indicated as FLIF, signifying myocardial necrosis. Okay? The normal value of your LDH or your lactate dehydrogenase is approximately 140 to 280 international units per litre. Another is your troponin. So your top troponin test measures the level of your cardiac specific troponin in the blood to help detect heart injury. Okay? When we say troponin, it's composed of your three proteins. Your troponin C, cardiac troponin I, and cardiac troponin T. Troponin 1 especially has a high affinity for myocardial injury. It rises within 3 hours and persists for up to 7 days. Normal values are low with troponin 1 being lower than 0.6 nanogram per ml and troponin T normally ranging from 0 to 0.2 nanogram per milliliter. Thus, any rise can indicate myocardial cell damage. Next is your myoglobin. Your myoglobin is an oxygen binding protein found in cardiac and skeletal muscles. The level rises within one hour after cell death, peaks in four to six hours, and return to normal within 24 to 36 hours. Next, it would be your complete blood count, okay? So your CBC identifies the total number of your white and red blood cells together with your platelets. It also measures your hemoglobin and your hematocrit. So in your red blood cells, when it is decreased, it decreases. It might be an indicative of your rheumatic heart disease and your infective endocarditis. Then, just in case that your red blood cells increases, it might be characterized by your conditions with inadequate tissue oxygenation. So let's proceed with your white blood cell scout. The white blood cell scouts increases during infectious and inflammatory process especially of the heart and especially after myocardial infarctions. Why? Because large number of white blood cells are needed to dispose of the necrotic tissues resulting from the infarctions. Another, in regards with your hematocrit, an elevated hematocrit level can result from your vascular volume depletions. While on your decreased hematocrit and 
hematocrit and hemoglobin levels is an indicative of your anemia. Next is your blood coagulations. PTT or your partial thromboplastin time or your APTT or your activated partial thromboplastin time measures the activity of the intrinsic pathway and is issued to assess the effects of your unfractionated heparin. The therapeutic range is about 1.5 to 2.5 seconds. Next, it would be your prothrombin time. So your prothrombin time measures the extrinsic pathway activity and is used to monitor the level of your anticoagulations with your warfarin or your comodine. Next is your international La International Normalized Ratio or your INR. The INR report is uh, reported together with your prothrombin time. It provides a standard method for reporting your prothrombin levels and eliminates the, vari the variations of your prothrombin results from different laboratories. The International Normalized Ratio rather than the prothrombin time alone is used to monitor the effectiveness of warfarin. The, the, the therapeutic range of your international normalized ratio is 2.0 to 3.5 seconds, although specific ranges may vary based on the diagnosis. Next is your serum lipids. Okay, the lipids profiles measures your serum cholesterol, triglycerides, and lipoprotein levels. The lipid profile is used to assess the risk of developing coronary artery disease. Cholesterol and triglycerides are transported in the blood by combining with protein molecules to, protect, to, pro, to form lipoproteins. The lipoproteins are referred to as low-density lipoproteins and high-density lipoproteins. Okay, Next is your serum lipids. So your serum lipids measures serum cholesterol, triglycerides, and your lipoprotein. Okay? Cholesterols and triglycerides are transported in the blood by combining with protein molecule to form lipoproteins. Okay? The lipoproteins are referred to us as low density lipoproteins and your high density lipoproteins. So, mainly, the lipid profile is used to assess the risk of developing coronary artery disease. Usually, the blood specimen for the lipid profile should be obtained after a 12-hour fast. Ibig sabihin, hindi ko maain yung client mo ng anything ng 12 hours. So, in terms of your cholesterol level, the desirable range should be less than 200 mg per deciliter. While your triglycerides, normally, it ranges uh, to, one, to 100 to 200 milligram per deciliter. Next, it would be your electrolytes. So, your electrolytes composes of your potassium, your sodium, your calcium, phosphorus, and your magnesiums. For your potassiums, usually, it has your, what we call your hypokalemia, or what we call your less than 3.5 mg per liter. Mil-equivalent mil per liter. Hypokalemia causes increased cardiac electrical instability, ventricular dysrhythmia, and increased risk of your digoxin toxicity. Kung mapapansin niyo sa ECG din natin, meron ka ding manonotice na changes on your... Uh, uh, ECG uh, strips. So, in hypokalemia, uh, the ECG shows a flattening and inversion of the T-wave. Okay? The appearance of U-wave and ST depression 
is also present. If the client naman is having your hyperkalemia or what we call your 5.5 milli equivalent per liter na value ng potassiums, it indicates hyperkalemia. It might be causes of your asystole and your ventricular dysrhythmias. Okay? In... Uh, in hypokalemia, you will notice the ECG changes together with your hyperkalemia, okay? In hyperkalemia, the ECG shows a tall peak T waves, widened QRS complex, prolonged PR intervals, or your flat fee waves. Next, it would be your sodiums, okay? The serum sodium level might decrease with the use of your diure. Okay? The serum sodium level decreases in heart failure, indicating your water excess. Next, it would be your calcium. Okay? So, calcium is necessary for blood coagulability, neuromuscular activity, and automaticity, automaticity of the nodal cells. Okay, no matter says. So, hypocalcemia and hypercalcemia. When you say hypocalcemia, there is a decreased level of your calcium in the blood. Together with your hyper, there's an increased level of your calcium in the lungs. So, hypocalcemia can cause ventricular dysrhythmias, prolonged ST and QT intervals, and worst thing is your cardiac arrest. For your hypercalcemia, it can cause a shortened ST segment and widened T wave, atrioventricular block, tachycardia or bradycardia, digitalis hypersensitivity, and cardiac arrest. So those are the possible results that might indicate your high or low presence of calcium. Okay. Next is your phosphorus level. Phosphorus level should be interpreted with calcium levels. Bakit? Because the kidneys retain or excrete one electrolyte in an inverse relationship to other. Okay? Next is your magnesium. So, magnesium, uh, there, if there's a decrease or low magnesium level, it might cause a ventricular tachycardia or ventricular Fibrillations, okay? Your ECG changes may also observe with hypomagnesemia or yung mababa ang ating magnesium level. It includes your tall T waves and depressed ST segments, okay? When we say high magnesium le level naman, it is what you call your hypermagnesemia. It may cause your muscle weakness, hypotensions, and your body Cardia. So, if there's also an ECG changes shows uh, that might be observed sa my client nating with more hypermagnesemia. It includes your prolonged PR interval and your widened QRS complex. Another is your BUN or your blood urea nitrogens. Okay? The blood urea nitrogen level is elevated in heart disorders that adversely affect renal circulation such as heart failure and cardiogenic shock. Next is your blood glucose. Okay? On your blood glucose, it is an acute cardiac episodes can elevate the blood glucose level. So if there's a presence of that, it might lead to your uh, acute cardiac episodes. Okay? Another is your B-type natriuretic peptide or your BNP. BNP is released in response to your atrial and ventricular stress. It serves as a marker for your congestive heart failure. So, ibig sabihin, magbi B nat ito. Okay? BNP level should be lower than 100 mg PG per ml because the higher the level, the more the severe the congestive heart failure is. Okay? So, kung mas mataas siya, mas severe yung condition ng client natin. Next, we will have what we call your chest radiograph. Okay? So, your chest radioprop is done to determine the size and silhouette and visualize the positions of your heart. Okay? 
So, in your chest radiography or your chest, chest ray, x-ray, uh, the specific pathological changes are difficult to determine. But anatomical changes can be seen. So, mak- makikita natin dito. Okay? So, our nursing responsibility during chest x-ray, prepare our clients and explain the purpose and procedure to them and as much as possible, remove all your jewel ray. Next is that you have what we call your ECG. I'm not going to discuss to you what is all about ECG. It's because you have a separate discussions in regards with your ECG. But just to give you a background in regards with your ECG, when we say ECG, it is it is it is to evaluate heart electrical activity. Next is your halter monitoring. Okay, in this non-invasive test. The clients wear a halter monitor and an electrocardiographic tracing that is recorded continuously over a period of 24 hours or more while the client performs his or her activity of daily living. The halter monitor identifies dysrhythmias if they occur and evaluates the effectiveness of antidysrhythmics or your pacemaker therapy. So, what is our nursing intervention if the client is placed under halter monitoring? Number one, instruct the client to resume normal daily activities kasi nga po yun po ang mini-measures natin. And to maintain a diary documenting activities and any symptoms that might develop for correlations with the electrocardiograph tracing. Next, instruct the client to avoid bathtubs or showers. Bakit? It because it will interfere with the electrographic recorder device. Okay? Next, it would be your echocardiography. Okay? So, your echocardiography, it yields information about cardiac structures and functions. So, if you will notice, guys, in the picture, yung client natin na kahiga, merong monitoring dito, merong probe na ilalagay, then ilalagay siya sa may chest part para sa ganun ma-visualize yung ating hearts. Okay? Yung stru- para makita natin yung structures and functions. If you will notice this one, eto po yung makikita nyo doon sa monitor natin once that the echocardiographer is performing yung scanning niya. Okay? So, the description of your echocardiogram is that it is a non-invasive procedure based on the principle of your ultrasound. That's what I've said. Gagamitan po siya ng ultrasounds that evaluates your cardiac structures and fun- uh, functions. Okay? The heart chamber size is measured, ejection fraction is calculated, and flow gradient across the valves is determined. So, yun yung mga mahikita natin doon. Okay? So, our nursing interventions would be number one, the only intervention that we will going to provide is that Determine the client's ability to lie still and advise the client to lie still, breath normally, and refrain from talking during test. Okay? So, dapat yung client natin during echocardiography is relax lang. Next is your exercise testing. This is a non-invasive test studies of the heart during activity and detects and evaluates coronary artery disease. Guys, if you will notice this one, this is what we call your tres- treadmill. So, commonly, they use the treadmill to test for your stress testing. Uh, sabi ko nga, it is a non-invasive, pero it might be your invasive siya when there's a radionuclide uh, is injected. Okay? So, if there's a presence of your radionuclide, so, yun na yung tinatawag natin medyo invasive na siya. Okay? Bakit po? Kasi nga po, we're going to inject your radionuclide. Okay? Just in case that if, uh, if they will gonna use your uh, radionuclide, you need, as a nurse, our, uh, our main concern is that we need to have your consent. Okay? Sir, just in case that the client is unable to tolerate exercise. 
Okay? Just in case po hindi siya makagalaw, hindi siya maka, hindi siya able na gumawa. Okay? So if that's occur, if that will happen, sorry, if that will happen, an intravenous infusion of dipyrimidol, dobutamine hydrochlorides, and adenosine is to be given to dilate the coronary arteries and stimulate the effect of exercise. Okay? So, our nursing management, preoperatively, ay pre-procedures, is sure, number one, obtain an informed consent. Okay? Kasi nga po, ganyan sabi ko, you have to have your uh, injection of your radionuclide. Okay? Next, provide adequate rest the night before the procedures. Kasi nga po, uh, yung test gagamitin mo ng treadmill, so papagalawin yung client mo. So, dapat magkaroon siya ng lahas. Next, instruct the client to eat a light meal 1 to 2 hours before the procedures. Para at least magkaroon, meron siyang source of energy. Okay? Next, instruct the client to avoid smoking, alcohol, and caffeine before the procedure. Bakit po? It's because it stimulate your constrictions. Ay, ang gusto natin, constriction relations, dilation. So, dapat i-avoid natin siya. Okay? Instruct the client to ask the physicians about taking prescribed medications on the day of the procedures. Okay? Number one is your teophylline products. Are usually, ano bakit itong teophylline products natin? Okay? Kailangan natin siyang i-hold. Teophylline together with your beta blockers. Okay? For your teofilins, kailangan natin hold siya for 20, 12 hours. While for your calcium channel blockers, we need to help at for your 24 hours. Uh, Para at isin tayo magkaroon ng problema. Okay? Kasi nga po itong mga to, it might cause your tachycardia or mag-increase po ang ating heart rates. Next is that, instruct the client to wear non-constructive, comfortable clothing and supportive rubber sole shoes for the exercise stress test. Bakit po? Kasi nga po, yung mga masisikip na damit pwede mag-cause ng constrictions. Eh, ang gusto natin, dilations. Okay? Next, we need also to watch out for what? We need to watch out for your uh, chest pain, dizziness, and your shortness of breath during the procedure. If this will happen, as a nurse, you will need to notify the physicians. Okay? We need to motiv uh, notify the physicians. Number three, it's your uh, tag ito? Post-procedure na. Okay? So, our post-procedure, it would be your instruct the client to avoid taking a hot bath or shower for at least one to two hours. Kasi mabibigla po yun. Magbibigla siya tayong magkakaroon ng constrictions. Okay. Next is your angiography. So when we say angiography, it is the visualization, the visualization of your coronary arteries with the ejection of your radiopaque contrast media. So if you will going to uh, check for the picture, guys, ito po yung pictures niya kung paano po siya nangyayari. So meron siyang catheter na in-insert. Tapos ayon. Okay. So your uh Angiography, uh, ginagamitan po siya ng dye. Oh, so, so, what will be our nursing interventions if, uh, if the patients will undergo angiography? First is that, assess for allergies to seafood, iodine, or your radiopaque dyes. Okay? Just in case the pre the, there's a presence of your allergic reactions or there's a presence of allergy, just inform your uh, attending physicians and she or he might be prescribed uh, be prescribed yung uh, antihistamine and your corticosteroids to prevent your what we call your reactions during the test okay we need also to check for or to obtain for your informed consent kasi nga we're going to inject your radio peaks next is your uh, post procedures we just to monitor for your vital signs especially this is your cardio we need to check for your uh, heart rate for your blood pressure together with your respirations okay then afterwards we need to check for your uh, sight if there's a presence of your bleeding or discomfort kasi nga meron tayong uh, port of entry ng catheter kaya the patient is at risk of developing your bleeding Okay, 
Next is your MRI. So your MRI is a test that produces an image of the heart or great vessels through interactions of your magnetic fields, radio waves, and your anatomic nuclei. So your MRI, MRI also provides an information on the chamber size of the heart and your the thickness of the heart. Okay. It, uh, it also provide the information of your valve and your ventricular functions together with the blood flow through the great blood vessels and your coronary arteries. Okay. So what is our uh, nursing interventions before the procedure? So we need to ask the client if there's a presence of your face maker or your implanted items. Okay. It's because as much as possible when the client is going to have your MRI, there should no be uh, metals. Wala dapat metals. That's why another intervention is that when the client has jewelries, yung mga watch and yung mga coins, we need to remove that before the patients will undergo MRI. So, kasi nga gagamit po tayo ng magnetic fields. Another is that uh, assess mo yung client mo or ask the client if he is uh, if he or she is claustrophobic. Ano po yun? Kung takot po ba siya doon sa closed spaces. Okay? So, inform natin siya. And I ask natin siya. Or another is that we need to inform them that during the procedure, the client might... Uh, the client may heard yung ringing sound, yung drumming-like sounds for the awareness of the clients. Kasi nga sobrang ingay po nito. Okay? Okay. Next is your cardiac catheterizations. Okay? Your cardiac catheterizations, it's an invasive test involving involving the insertion of a catheter into the heart and your surrounding vessels. Okay? It obtains the information about the structure and performance of the heart chambers together with the valves and the coronary circulations. Okay? Usually, sir, paano po ginagawa ang ating uh, cardiac catheterizations? If you will notice, guys, ito, yung sa picture, ganun po, okay? Ganun, ganito po yung itsura niya, okay? So, the, the auditor is inserted into the femoral vein and then advanced into the inferior vena cava, to the right atrium, right ventricle, and into the pulmonary artery. So, yon So, nakita niyo yung arrow sa femoral, dere-derecho, sa inferior vena cava, right atrium, hanggang sa ating pulmonary artery. Okay, guys. So, what is our intervention? Ano yung gagawin natin? If the client is will will undergo cardiac catheterizations, number one is your inter obtain informed consent. Number two, assess for allergies to seafood, iodine, or radio fake dyes. Okay? Bakit? Kasi nga po, mag-inject ulit tayo ng ating radio fake. So, pag invasive test, consent. Okay? Pag merong dye, consent. Okay, para at least aware yung client mo at ma-assure ma natin na the client is willing to undergo for such procedure. Another is that we need to inform our client to have at uh, nothing per orem or instruct our clients to have uh, to withhold your food approximately 6 to 8. Okay, 6 to 8 hours. Yung mga 6 to 8 hours are your solid food. Okay? We need to withhold that uh, food 6 to 8 hours. Okay? If, uh, for fluids naman, is that 4 hours before the procedures. We need to withhold on that. Okay? Bakit po kaya i-withhold ang, mga, ang solid food and liquid food? It's to prevent for your aspirations and vomiting during the procedure. Okay? Okay po. And next is that we need to gather or we need to get the height and weight of our client. Why do we need to get the height and weight of the clients? So that alam po nung doctor kung ilan yung amount that to be needed na dye ang ibibigay during the procedures. Okay? Next also is that we need to check for your vital signs. Okay? We need to check for the vital signs, uh, especially for your peripheral, peripheral pulses. 
as much as possible, meron, i-check natin siya, meron tayong baseline, so that afterwards, after the procedure, makita pa rin natin siya. To detect, if there's an uh, discretion, uh, if there's an, uh, what do you call it one? Uh, pagkakaiba, there's a difference between the baseline uh, vital signs or the baseline peripheral pulses af- and after your procedure. So, makikita natin ang difference noon. Okay? So, we need also to inform the client that uh, a local anesthesia will be given prior to the injections or prior to the catheter insertion. Okay. So we need also to instruct our client na to lie still for at least 2 hours because kasi nga parang uh, medyo mapapagod talaga siya. Parang feel niya mapapagod siya. That's why you need to instruct the client after na dapat nakahiga lang siya for 2 hours. Okay. You need also to inform your client, okay? Inform your client uh, that she or he may feel uh, a fluttery feeling. Okay? Fluttery feeling as the catheter passes through the heart. Okay? So, flatty feeling siya as the catheter passes through the heart. Also, a flush, warm feeling kapag na-inject naman po ang ating dye. Okay? Kapag in-insert, fluttery feelings. Okay? Kapag in-inject ang dyes, flush and warm naman po ang mararamdaman nung client ninyo. Okay? Next is that another intervention if the client is taking metformin. Okay? Metformin. We need to withhold your metformin 48 hours before the procedures. Okay? Bakit po? It's because of the risk of your lactic acidosis. Okay, lactic acidosis, bakit nga po? Bakit magka- pwede magkaroon ng lactic acidosis? Because we, because we will gonna use your iodine dye. So, as much as possible, ask the client kung may maintenance ba siya na metformin, withhold mo siya 48 hours. Okay? Next is that, prepare the insertion site by shaving and cleaning with an antiseptic solution sa insertion site. Bakit po? Gaya po nang sabi ko, it's an invasive procedure. So, uh, the patient is a high risk of developing infections. That's why, as much as possible, we need to prepare the insertion sites aseptically. Okay? So, next is that we need also to administer medications sa client nyo, especially your sedatives, if prescribed. Okay? But at least, tulog po yung client natin during the procedures. Okay? Next, we need also to uh, insert an IV line if it's indicated. Okay? If it's in- indicate- indicated. Okay? So, next is that, what is our intervention post-procedure? So, our intervention Post-procedure is number one, monitor vital signs and cardiac rhythm for the presence of your dysrhythmias. Okay? So, gaano siya, gaano yung intervals niya? As much as possible, check for the vital signs every 30 minutes for how long? For 2 hours. Okay, you need to check, you need to monitor your client vital signs every 30 minutes for 2 hours. Next, what do we need to assess? What do we need to check? Okay, we need to check if the pla- patients will complain chest pain. Okay, if the client has cardiac dysrhythmias. Okay, if the client has bleeding and hematoma. And if the client has no peripheral pulses. And if the client is pale and cool. That's the time we need to notify the physicians, okay? It's because maybe the client or the client now is now developing the what we call your complications related to their procedures. So, we need to inform our clients, okay? We need to inform our doctor, sorry, our doctor. Another, 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 another interventions is that maintain bed rest for at least 6 to 12 hours, Okay? Bed rest mo ng 6 to 12 hours. Okay? 
So, as much as possible, flat on bed yung client natin. Though, pwede naman siyang mag-turn side to sides. But, do not elevate the head of the bed more than 50 degrees. That's why, as much as possible, flat on bed lang siya. Okay? Okay. Just in case, if they will, go, if they will insert yung catheter natin sa ating anti-cubital space, pwede na, uh, as much as possible, immobilize natin yung ating Uh, anti-cubital space. As much as possible, apply splint. Okay? Huwag natin siyang galaw-galawin. Okay? Another is that we need to encourage our client to increase oral fluid intakes. Bakit po? Para magkaroon tayo ng renal excretion. Bakit? Kasi nga po, we use your radio pig. Gusto ba natin tanggalin ang ating dye sa katawan? Yes, by means of excretion. Paano ka makapag-promote ng excretion? Increase mo ang oral fluid intake niya. Or, pwede naman na ma, uh, magbigay ka ng diuretics as prescribed by your doctor. Okay? Okay po. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Since, last interventions, since your client is taking metformin, guys, sabi ko, if the client is taking metformin, if that's the case, we need to withhold again. Okay? Your metformin for 48 hours or until further order. Okay? So, ayun nga po, we, uh, we want to prevent your the, the, the occurrence of your lactic acidosis. So, we need to withhold again uh, yung ating metformin. So, after 48 hours, we will gonna inform the doctors na doc, 48 hours na po tayo. So, uh, the client is taking metformin. So, wait natin yung further order niya. Okay? So, that's all about your cardiac catheterization. Another diagnostic procedures is your central venous pressure. Okay? Uh, the central venous pressure is the pressure within the superior vena cava. It reflects the pressure under which the blood is returned to the superior vena cava and right atrium. Okay? The CBP or your central venous pressure is measured with a central venous line in the superior vena cava. Okay? So normally, our CBP is 3 to 8 millimeter mercury. Okay? 3 to 8 millimeter mercury. Note this, guys. An elevated CBP indicates an increase in blood volume as a result of, number one, sodium and water retention number two excessive IV fluids and number three alterations in fluid balance or your renal failure okay just in case that there's a decrease of your central venous pressure it indicates your decrease in blood volume circulation okay decrease In circulation, the, decrease the circulation of your blood volumes and may be a result of your fluid imbalances, hemorrhage, or severe vasodilations. Okay? So, yung mga pwedeng maging indicative pag nagkaroon ng decreased CBP. Okay? How we are going to measure your CBP? Okay? How we are going to measure the CBP? The right atrium is located at the mid-axillary line at the fourth intercostal space. The zero point on the transnu transducer needs to be at the level of the right atrium. Guys, punta kayo sa right nyo. Uh, kapain nyo po yung dibdib nyo. Okay? So, sa right atrium, mid-axillary right at the fourth mid-axillary line at the fourth intercostal space. So, right atrium, fourth intercostal space. Kapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapakapak
Note that activity that increases intrathoracic pressure such as cough and swelling will cause false increase in the readings. O, yun. So, pwede na kapag yung client natin is nag-cough, pag yung client is nag-sneeze, magkakaroon tayo ng false result. Iba yung makukuha natin. Okay? Okay po. Just in case, your client is intubated or may tubo sa bunganga. Okay? Or naka-ventilator na tinatawag natin. Okay? So, we need to check or we need to measure the CBP every at the end point of expiration. Okay? So, at the end of our expiration, saka mo lang siya sure. Okay po? Okay po. So, next is that uh, to maintain potency of the line, a constant small amount of fluid is delivered under the pressure. So, meron siyang pressure. Okay. Na, ay, meron siyang fluid para at least ma-maintain natin yung potency ng line. Okay? Saan po ba siya naka-connecta? Okay? Saan po naka-connecta sa atin? Tama po. Okay. Nakakonekta po tayo sa ating superior vena cava. Okay. Para at least measure natin yung ating CVP. Okay. Okay po. So, that's the different diagnostics and uh, procedures of your uh, cardiovascular disorders. Okay, next is that we're going to discuss your therapeutic management related to your cardiovascular disorder. So, first is that it is your percutaneous transluminar coronary angioplasty. Okay, so if you will notice guys, meron kayong picture dito. Yung picture natin dito is your uh, artery, tapos uh, meron siyang catheter na parang catheter pero balloon po yun. Okay? So, by means of this one, magkaroon tayo ng arterial dilation with the use of your balloon. Okay? So, when we say PTCA is an uninvasive, uninvasive non-surgical technique in which one or more artery is dilated with balloon catheter to open the vessel's lumen and improve arterial blood flow. Okay? So, your PTCA may be indicated for your client with your MI. Okay? Just in case, if the client is experiencing re-occlusion, meron po maurit, re-occlusions after the procedures, then the clients may undergo another PTCA procedures. Okay? So, another PTCA procedures. So, what is our what are the complications that is related to your PTCA the complications that is related to this is that it might have your arterial dis dissection or rupture okay kasi nga po baka nga masugat-sugat siya or bakit bumutok siya it's because of the balloons presence ano pa immobilization of flock fragments is spasms and your acute MI Okay? Okay pa. So, what will be our health educations to our clients before the procedure? Yung mga pwede natin sabihin sa client, sa client natin. Okay. The clients might adhere to stop smoking. Okay? Uh, magkaroon ng diet. The client must lose weight. And kailangan dapat magkaroon siya ng uh, proper exercise para at least is uh, medyo hindi mahirapan tayo sa PTCPE. Okay? So, what is our nursing interventions pre-procedures? Our nursing interventions pre-procedures, number one, it's your maintain PO status after midnight. Okay? So, dapat uh, walang ipapakain sa client natin uh, post midnight para at least hindi magkaroon ng risk of your aspirations. Okay? Okay po. Okay. Next, we need also to prepare prepare for your uh, insertion site. 
Okay? Kasi nag-surgical naman siya, pero meron pa rin siyang insertion site para doon uh, dadal, uh, papasok yung ating catheter with balloons. Okay? We need to, uh, what do you call this one? We need to uh, prepare the site aseptically. Okay? To prevent the risk of your infections. Okay? Another is that we need to assess for your peripheral falses. Okay? Uh, that will serve our baseline data so that after the procedures, we will have the baseline to check for any difference dung sa ating uh, pre uh, peripheral pulse before the procedures and after the procedures. Okay. Okay. Next, we need to instruct our client that she or he may feel uh, pain on the chest area during your balloon inflation. Pag pinalobo yung balloon, dapat uh, normal lang na magkaroon ng feeling ng sakit or magkaroon ng chest pain yung client ninyo. That's the normal. If uh, chest pain will not occur, then you will going to notify your physicians. Okay. So, what is our post pre uh, post procedure interventions? Okay. So, our post procedure interventions is that, number one, monitor vital signs closely. Oh, kasi nga po, uh, para ma-check natin, para baka magkaroon naman na po ng further complications yung clients natin. Okay? Next is your assess pulses in both extremities. Either sa press of your pulses. Next is your administer anticoagulants. Okay? Bak- why do we need to uh, administer anticoagulants? To prevent your thrombus formations. Okay, to prom to promote your uh, to prevent your thrombus formations, we need also to give your IV nitroglycerin as ordered. Okay, we need to give your IV nitroglycerin as ordered to prevent naman your coronary artery vasospasm. Okay, to prevent naman po yung uh, coronary bar uh, artery vasos pasam yung paninigas naman po next we need to instruct our client to increase OFI bakit po to promote excretion ng ating dye okay to promote to promote excretions of our dye and lastly we're going to anticipate uh, that the doctors will order your aspirin to your client to take, uh, instruct the client to take the aspirin la- uh, lifetime, as much as possible, as indicated. So, if the client is taking aspirin, so ang mga interventions natin is more on your bleeding precautions. So, we need to instruct our client that uh, she or he needs to report if your bleeding uh, occurrence, uh, if your bleeding is present, during the taking of your uh, aspirin. Sir, ano po yung mga pwedeng ito? Sir, pwede po ba yung black ang pupo ko? So, pwede. Pwede naman po siya. Yung nagbibleed po yung gums ko, pwede ba? Yes, sir, pwede po. Pag meron akong ikimosis, pwede ba? Oo, pwede po. So, with that one, pag nag-take yung client mo ng aspirin, so yung mga bleeding, uh, uh, bleeding, possible na bleeding na symptoms, i-refer natin agad so that alam nung doctor no, then we will implement na yung further management on that. Okay. Sir, so paano po ginagawa yung percutaneous transluminar coronary angioplasty? Okay. So number one, ang ginagawa po doon, paano ginagawa? Number one, the balloon tip cutter is positioned in the artery. So sa artery muna, ipapasok siya. Okay. So after that, the insert yung catheter, yung inflated balloon is going to insert Okay, in the abstraction, kung isang abstraction, yun uh, doon la- ilalagay yung balloon. Okay? Then pag nandoon na siya sa may abstractions, you are going to inflate or going to inflate the balloons. Ano dapat maramdaman ng client mo, chest pain or hindi? Dapat yung client mo makafeel siya ng chest pain. Normal lang naman po 'yon. Okay? Then after that, i- uh, kapag na flatten na yung ating mga flak then they will gonna remove the balloon. So, ganun po yung ginagawa sa atin sa percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty. Paano ginagawa dito? 
arterial dilations with the use of what? With the use of your balloon. Balloon, balloon, balloon. Next, therapeutic management is your is your laser-assisted angioplasty. Okay, so ito po yung laser-assisted angioplasty natin. Okay, laser-assisted angioplasty. Your laser-assisted angioplasty, uh, same lang naman po siya ng PTC, PTCA. Kaso, yung sa PTCA, yung malalaki na uh, artery ang, ang dinadilate natin, on this part naman po siya is your mga small, yung mga uh, bumab- nabarahan na maliliit lang naman siya. Okay. So, same management with your PTCPA. Okay. So, for small occlusions, it's your, we will use the laser-assisted angioplasty. Another is your coronary artery stents. Okay? So, it, ito, stents, stents, stents. So, your coronary artery stents are used in conjunctions with your PTCA to provide a supportive scaffold to eliminate the risk of your acute coronary vessel closure and to improve long-term patency of the vessels. So, in this, a catheter, a balloon catheter bearing the stent in the inserted into the coronary artery and position at the side of occlusions and your balloons inflated then deploys the stent. Okay? Guys, I will going to send na lang sa inyo ng video on how to perform your PTCA, your laser-assisted angioplasty together with your coronary stent so that you will be able to appreciate yung ating uh, procedures. Okay? So, what is our prep procedure for your coronary artery stent? Number one is that uh, same siya. <laughs> Ayun, para mas madal. Same siya with your PTCPA again pa rin. Kung ano yung management ng sa PTCPA, yun pa rin ang ating gagawin. Okay? So, same lang siya ng management with your PTCPA. Next is your aterect to me, okay? Your aterectomy is the removal of your plaques from the coronary artery by the use of your cutting chamber on the inserted catheter. Okay? The heart catheter. So, our nursing interventions is that same pa din siya with your PTCPA. Okay? So, what do we monitor na lang? We need to monitor for your complications just like your perforations embolus and your reoculation. Okay? Perpuration, embolus, and your reocclusions. Another, it would be your transmyocardial revascularizations. Okay? It is used for client with widespread atherosclerosis involving vessels that are too small and numerous for replacement or balloon catheterizations performed through a small chest incisions. It is used as a high-powered lasers that creates 20 to 24 channels through the ventricular muscles of the left ventricle in which the blood enters to the small channels providing the affected region of the heart with your oxygenated blood. Okay? That's what you call your ating transmyocardial revascularizations. Another is your arterial revascularizations. It is done to increase arterial blood flow to the affected limb naman. Okay? So, more on, your, 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 your arterial revascularizations is indicated for your clients with your arterial vascular disorder. Okay? So, what will be our management? Our management, number one, assist baseline data and peripheral falses. Number two, insert your line and urinary catheter. Number three, maintain your CBP. For your post-operative, you need to assess the vital signs. You need to check for your BP. If there's uh, changes of your blood pressure, you need to inform your doctor. Okay? It's because if there's a process of your hypotensions, or mababa ang BP, the clients may experience, uh, is, is experiencing your hypovolemia. Okay? And kapag mataas naman po, if there's a presence of hypers or elevated blood pressures, it might facilitate your clot for 
affirmations. Okay? Another is that we need to instruct our client to maintain bed rest for 24 hours. Okay? So, yun po yung mga pwede natin gawin. Next, we need to instruct our client to uh, as much as possible to avoid or to limit or to immobilize the uh, affected extremities. Para at least, hindi tayo magkaroon ng ating uh, what do you call this one? Ng ating reclusion. Okay po. So, another, we need to monitor for your bleeding. So, yun yung mga pwede nating uh, interventions in regards with your arterial revascularizations. Okay? Next is our coronary artery bypass grafting. Okay? So, your CABG. Okay? Coronary artery bypass grafting. Okay? So, The occluded coronary arteries are bypassed with the client's own venous or arterial blood. Okay. In here, the saphenous vein, internal mammary artery, or other arteries may be used to bypass lesions in the coronary arteries. Okay. Coronary artery bypass grafting is performed when the client does not respond to medical management of the coronary artery or when vessels are severely occluded. So, ang mangyari dito, uh, bypass lang naman. So, da, uh, kung, yung, uh, kung sana, yung line natin, side for example, is yung line 1 to line 2, going to line 3, side for example, nag-occlude ang line 2, so, i-coconnect natin ang yung line 1 to line 3, para continue pa rin yung flow natin. That's what you call your bypass. Okay? That is what you call your bypass. So, what will be our nursing management? Our nursing management, we need to inform the family and the patients that uh, the uh, client may uh, stay to your surgical critical care units. Okay? Kasi nga medyo hectic or medyo, uh, ang tawag ito? Risky yung procedures natin. Okay? Next, inform the client to expect an external incisions. Okay. Next is that, inform the client that an ET tube might be inserted at hindi siya makapagsalita. Okay. So, normal lang naman yun kasi nga uh, mayroong tubo na nakalagay doon. Okay. Okay po. Inform the client that since the client has your ET tube, he or she should uh, maybe hook into your mechanical ventilations that will assist him or her on her, on his or her ventilations. Okay? Okay po. Next is that uh, we need to administer yung mga medications na prescribed by the doctors before your uh, procedures such as your potassium chloride antihypertensive, antidesweetmix and antibiotics, so it depends kung ano po yung i-order ng ating doctor okay, so after the procedures the client, ganyan sabi yan kanina the client may, might be placed onto your coronary uh, surgical unit or your surgical cardiac uh, surgical units. So, uh, uh, our nursing interventions, once the clients will be placed in uh, CSU, is that we need, we need to uh, maintain the mechanical ventilations for 6 to, to 24 hours. Okay? We need to closely monitor our clients. Ganyan sabi ko. Yun nga po. Then, Uh, assess for your fluid and your electrolyte balance. Okay? Then, if the client has edema, if the client has edema, we need to restrict the fluids up to 1,500 to 2,000 ml of your fluid as prescribed. Okay? We need to monitor for hypotension. Bakit we need to monitor for the hypotensions? Because it might cause Collapse 
of the vein graft, yung pinaypas nyo, baka pwede siyang mag-collapse. We need also to <coughs> to uh, monitor for hypertensions because uh, increased pressure uh, might uh, cause leakage sa ating suture line. Okay? Pag nagkaroon ng uh, leakage sa ating suture line, it might cause bleeding. Okay? Next, we need also to check for your temperature. Baka nga dahil sa, baka there's a possibility of increase your uh, presence of pyrogens. That's why we need to check for the blood, uh, the body temperature. Okay? And we need to anticipate that the client may receive your potassium uh, intravenously as prescribed to prevent the occurrence of your district niya. Okay? So, that's our nursing interventions the point is placed on to your cardiac surgical units. Okay? So, if the client is transferred to the cardiac surgical unit na, hindi siya post-operative, to na yung uh, uh, going to rehabilitations na. So, what do we need to monitor? We need to monitor for the vital signs the level of consciousness and your peripheral perfusions and your peripheral pulses. We need to monitor for the street nias. We need also to assess for the respiratory status of your clients. And we need to splint if the client will going to cough or to have a deep breathing exercise. We need to splint the uh, insertion sites para sa ganoon is hindi naman magkaroon ng pagbubuka. We need to instruct our client to use your incentive spirometer. For the incentive spirometer, we have a separate discussions on that. So, we will going to discuss that one in a separate discussions. Okay? So, next is that we need to continually, uh, continuously monitor the patient's body temperature. Bakit nga po? It's because pwede siya hanggang 3 to 4 days, baka magkaroon siya ng uh, elevated temperature which uh, an indicative of the presence of your infections. Okay? Another, we need to instruct our client na to increase your fluid intake in the absence of your edema para at least maliquify yung mga secretions ng client natin. Okay? And lastly, we need to uh, guide our client to return or to gradually resume the activity of daily living. So, pero gradually, sabi ko nga, hindi naman po yung strenuous activity na ang ating gagawin. Okay? Okay po. Okay po. So, what will be our health teaching? Okay. What will be our health teaching to our clients kapag pa na for home? Okay. So, gaya sabi ko nga, Number one is your progressive return to activities at home. Progressive return to activities at home. So, ibig sabihin, gradual lang naman siya. Okay? So, kung ngayon, nakapaglakad siya ng sampung hakbang, so, the following day, hapahabakin mo siya ng 15, the following day, 20. So, progressive return to home activities. Kasi ngayon, paglalakad-lakad, okay naman. Okay? Basta wag po yung uh, mabilisan na mga activities. Okay. Next, we need to instruct them to limit pushing or pulling activities. Gaano po katagal? After 6 weeks. Para at least hindi naman po mabigla yung katawan ng client natin. Okay. Next is that we need to instruct the incisional care or your wound care. Okay. Bakit po? Kasi nga po, baka magkaroon po ng presence of infections, mas mahirap po siya. So, we need to uh, present to them, we need to teach them what are the possible signs and symptoms that is related to your infection. Just like your redness, your swelling, of there's a, or there's a presence of your serangenous or your uh, pus or your drainage. Okay? Okay pa. So, we need also to instruct our client to avoid the crossing of your legs para at least magkaroon tayo ng proper perfusions. 
Okay? We need also to remind the client to take the medications on time. Para at least, uh, on time and as prescribed, para at least, hindi siya magkaroon ng problema or hindi siya mapag-develop ng further complications later in life. Okay? So, what will be the diet? As well as possible, the, uh, we, the client need to avoid saturated fats and fats such as uh, the, the food that contain your saturated fats, cholesterols, and your high salt. As well as possible, yun yung diet niya. Low salt, low fat. Okay? So, sir, ito po kasi, physiologic needs ko po siya. Okay? Sir, physiologic needs ko po siya. <laughs> sir, paano ko po sa aking sex activity? Okay? Okay. Wala na po bang sex? Kasi medyo extreme yun ni eh. Extreme yun. So, guys, pwede naman po siya mag-resume ng, uh, what do you call this one? Pwede siya mag-resume ng sexual activity niya Basta, bumalik na siya, na-resume na niya or tolerated na niya yung exercise niya plus the patients can walk one block or climb two flights of your stairs na walang nararamdaman. Okay? So, pwede siya makapag-sex kapag nakapaglakad na siya ng maayos. Pag one to two, climb na siya ng uh, hagdan at wala siyang naramdaman na discomforts. pwede na siya mag-resume uh, ng kanyang sexual activity. So, that's the different therapeutic, therapeutic management that is related to your cardiovascular disorder. So, as what I've said a while back, that I'm going to send to you a video presentations on the different therapeutic management so that you will be able to appreciate, appreciate the procedures Para sa ganun, hindi tayo mabihind. Okay. So, thank you for your, thank you for listening with my uh, brief discussions on the diagnostic and your therapeutic management related to your cardiovascular disorder.